The drone is trained from scratch. Uh, it, the first thing it, it does is actually take random actions uh, to try to figure out what happens when it takes, takes these different actions, see, see uh, where the velocity is, where, how it moves. Uh, and gradually, as it, as it learns the kind of model of the world, uh, we start giving it harder and harder tasks, uh, moving up and down, holding in one place, uh, that, that sort of thing. Building a system from scratch, this AI system from scratch, uh, is, is a lot like training a dog or, or having, having a kid. Uh, you really have to get into the mind of what, what it's experiencing and what kind of problems it's going to have uh, in order to debug things. It's very different than kind of the software, you know, standard software approach. Um, and one of the things that's beneficial to have this AI for is like for this, uh, this claw down here that's swinging around, um, that helps the dynamics, but it makes the flight dynamics much more difficult uh, to, have, to have that swinging around. Uh, so, so for example, when we first trained it, we trained it with that, uh, and then as, we, uh, as it got stable, we started adding more and more weight to that claw, uh, and we didn't change the code at all, but it learned how to handle that swinging weight uh, all on its own. Yeah, there's some kind of complex pendulum force equation and sure. you didn't teach the AI that, it taught the pen, it figured out the pendulum. It, it figured that all that out itself, yeah. So the classical way to do that would be to model that all, figure out those dynamics manually, right? And any time it changed, you would have to redo all of that work. Uh, we were able to do things like add uh, a block of wood in there to extend it uh, without modeling it, you know, just like throw that together real quick, it learns how to deal with it. Uh, that's been able to kind of speed up our, our production really quick, you know, we can quickly change things and learns to adapt. Uh, we don't have to make a bunch of code changes. The drone is set up in this mesh cage and it has straps, kind of like training wheels, as it learns how to pick and place the adobe material forming walls through automation. Most of these sliders are actually just for uh, various parameters of the AI of the, of the search uh, it's doing. Uh, so it, it, most of the time you don't actually have to, have to touch it much. It's more of just for fine tuning. It's easier to have some knobs. Uh, to turn than to have to like type in numbers or uh, and there's some buttons like for emergency stopping and that kind of thing as well. Open AI would be my frame for understanding of AI. So is there a, an equivalent of temperature or like the randomness? Um, yeah, yeah, and that's actually one. Of, some of these are giving uh, uh, some bounds for basically how how extreme an action it can take. So I can dial it down like in the very beginning of training, dial it down so uh, it can't take very extreme maneuvers. Uh, and then kind of as it learns, they give it a larger and lo you know, longer and longer leash, uh, let it take more extreme maneuvers, and also let it be more stable, right? If, it's, uh, if, it, doesn't have, if it can't make extreme maneuvers, uh, it's not gonna be able to stay steady in wind and that kind of thing. Tags that you see around everywhere are called April tags. They're a lot like a QR code. The drone uses those for positioning. There's one in the center that it knows is a absolute origin, its own position. And so then the rest don't matter as much because it starts triangulating where they are and then it can compare that back to the model on the fly. But today is just checking out. Uh, we also cleaned up some of the wiring inside and changed instead of having uh, push connectors and stuff, we uh, soldered them on. Originally, these are the same power supplies that we were using, but we had it kind of multiple items that we had to bring out here. We had a cart that had the power supplies on it. We had to pick the drone up, carry it out here, hook it up. Uh, it was many trips in and out and would take, you know, upwards of 45 minutes to get everything brought out here, set up and plugged in. So I designed a cart that the drone can nest on. It can strap down. We can load this onto a trailer this way for transportation. Um, it has all the power supplies inside that the drone needs and all the other electronics to power it. So we have a NEMA 1450 plug, basically an RV cable that hooks up for ACN. And then we have uh, the DC out on this side, along with the power switch to turn it off and on to power cycle it. That way when we're unplugging the leads that it's not um, hot. So uh, try and keep everything as safe as possible. And this was a custom enclosure 3D printed uh, to house a standard button. I 3D printed a uh, cover plate to go over the elect uh, standard electric box, and we actually used welding leads, um, twist lock welding leads, because they're rated for the amperage that we needed. We were wanting to try and find quick connect plugs that would be easy to connect and disconnect, and I came from a welding shop, and that came to mind, and they're working out pretty well. Uh, custom TPU lid and then a little reinforcement lid that keeps it pulled up in the middle 
to let water drain out. Hey, they're going to do a pick in place of the adobe form that they've made. We just saw the process of how it's mixed together. Hopefully they're able to combat the wind and get a steady pick up and drop. They've got a styrofoam plate here set up on some cinder blocks and the crane operation. Let's see how it goes. Oh, nice. Because now it'll be a payoff when it happens, you know? Process and then it'll pick it up. Right, right. In the video, it'll be a dopamine hit for the viewer. So this yep. is, I'm really excited about it. <laughs> All you gotta do is pick one up though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>
this part of the wall here has has no protection. Uh, it's like just the material, just the, the raw adobe material. This one we've sprayed with uh, with the protective sealant. Uh, this wall, even when it was when it was fresh, it was like not perfectly smooth. Uh, but uh, yeah, the rain has barely done anything. It's been sitting out here for months. All this here, uh, this came from uh, Randall's property. It's an old bridge. Uh, we're building a full-scale wall seismic testing rig out of this. So we'll be able to test eight foot by eight foot sections of wall. We press the top plate one way, uh, kind of there and back, there and back until failure. Uh, then we can back those numbers out to get an R factor and that gives us our, the seismic stability of the current system we're using. We're testing different stuff in the shop, different types of metal, different straps, different mixes, trying to find kind of an optimal sweet spot. So this will be uh, a huge part of our test lab is to be able to do full, full scale wall testing. The main thing we were testing, just getting the, the localization system, uh, making sure that was working working well, uh, fixed multiple bugs, so that was that was definitely doing well. Um, and just repeatability, like can we, how, how many pick and places can we do? Localization is, is uh, the method that it's using to figure out where it is in, in space. Uh, since it's, it's flying, uh, it has to use uh, computer vision uh, to look at the tags on the ground, as well as kind of the, the texture of the world around it, uh, to figure out where it is accurately, uh, you know, to the centimeter. Uh, so what was your role today? Uh, just kind of moving the earth around, mixing it up, kind of my eyes where, where Zach's can't be on, on the build site. We still have a little bit of human control mixed in with the, with the flight controller. Uh, it's pretty windy today. It's pretty atypical for us to be in gusts this, this high. So uh, just kind of working through those, those bugs and having someone on, with eyes on the ground. You talked a little bit about like the psychology of the AI. Yep. What did the AI see today? Uh, I mean, I think it hadn't seen this much wind before, so that was new. It was good to collect that data. When it was picking it up, it was actually like feeling, you could definitely sell, tell it was like feeling the, the board as it was pressing down on it. And uh, yeah, yeah, but overall, overall went really well. Wind was definitely, this much wind was definitely new. So yeah. what are some of the things that I might see next time I'm here? Uh, hopefully next next time you're here, we are uh, actually building, building some walls, uh, picking place. Uh, we have an impact camera inside that we're working on. Uh, uh, to, to shape the wall once it's placed, so it's not just these you know a bunch of blobs stacked on top of each other. Um, so yeah, have have that ready. Uh, actually, making making walls autonomously. We're also ramping up on the the more at scale mixing gear, so you might see the front end of the process, kind of like you know, how this material comes to be. You know, it's one thing for it to be cheap and you know sourced on the site, but then getting it together in a, a composite that, that functions um, at a scale. This is the next step. Yeah, we've got some, some cool projects lined up uh, for the next few months. So depending on when, when you're here, uh, yeah, we'll get, get some good projects. Uh, yeah, feel free to reach out. Yeah. I guess I guess on our website, liveterran.com, uh, there's a lot of contact information there. Yeah, that's, that's the best direction right now. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Anything else? No, that's it. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for coming by. Yeah, yeah, nice to hang out for the week.